That's right. The best elected official job in this country is to be the sheriff. Um, I'm, I don't have a boss, the governor, the president, the, the board of supervisors, none of them have, can tell me um, what to do. The only people I, that can tell me what to do are the people. And so I take that very serious that I represent the people. Um, this is, it was very beneficial. Like for example, during COVID when I saw tremendous government overreach, uh, I saw that they were locking people down and saying you couldn't go to church and saying you had to wear a mask and telling you you had to get vaccinated. We weren't for any of that here in this agency. And I have the ability to do that and nobody could say boo about it because I represented the people. Um, I didn't work for the governor or any of them. So that's the biggest difference between a sheriff and a chief. They work for the mayor or the city council. And if they say the wrong thing, they can lose their job. As a sheriff, the, uh, the way I lose my job is if the people get tired of me and don't vote me back in. But as far as me ticking off the board of supervisors or the governor or the president or any of that, it doesn't matter because they can't do anything about my, uh, st my employment status other than uh, if the people decide not to vote me back in. So there's a lot of power in that. And the sheriffs that do recognize that um, and exercise that are a tremendous asset to their communities. Yeah, I'm I'm telling you, I, as being a cop, the more and more I see of these badass sheriffs that step up, you know, uh, Grady, I think, uh, is a sheriff in Florida. Yep. Is he a sheriff? Yeah, yep. um, he's badass. And, you know, I've heard some of the stuff you you've spoken about and uh, made stances on. And I'm like, this is the type of leadership that us cops look for. Like, <laughs> Yeah. It's badass to hear. So, um, I, yeah, I've just always been curious, you know, being up there, you know, you get voted in. Now, you've got twofold to look at. You got to look at citizens' needs, but then you also have to look at your officers' needs and stuff like that. So, or I'm sorry, deputies. Um, while you were stepping into that role, now you're coming from a law enforcement background, what were the first things for the cops that you were looking to change? That you were like, I need to get this for the guys and we need to change or uh, switch the culture for these guys here? What was, what were you looking at? So when we came in, uh, you know, morale was low. Um, the guys, they hadn't gotten an raise in 11 years. Um, and I just think they Holy need shit. some different leadership, some stronger leadership. We certainly had to get to work and try to figure out how we were going to get these guys raises and get the pay up to where it needed to be. And we wanted to make sure the morale was, uh, was high. So when we came in, you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, recognize that Chief Thomas, I think you've had him on your show. He was probably the best decision I've made as a sheriff is to have Chief Thomas in this role. Um, had another chief uh, who was a sergeant when I was out here, brought in another guy that was the only guy I brought in from the outside to work the jail. All of it was designed and we, we attacked those things. How are we going to get these guys more money, which obviously affects morale as well? And how do we deal with the morale? Immediately when we came in, what we could change immediately is we did things like letting people have their goatees. Um, we started letting them grow beards out during uh, No Shave November. Now we allow them to have beards. Um, the previous administration said if you had tattoos, you had to cover them. We said, look, you don't have to do that anymore unless you have um, unless you have obscene tattoos or something. So the right. a little changes that we made that started to change the morale. But the way that you really change the morale and the culture in an agency is by consistent leadership, consistently showing that you back your people up, that you're out there for the best interests of them, that you're doing everything you can to fight for them, that you protect them from the from the press and all these other people. Um, and then you also are working for their families. And we went to doing things that would get them raises. Since then, I think our guys have gotten four or five raises in the last seven years. Um, Obviously, as the sheriff's office, we're always going to be a little bit lower than some of the other places, but we've really worked hard to try to stay competitive with the other agencies and those affected morale, too. A lot of just a lot of little things just that just made a difference in how they went about doing their job, made their jobs easier, like saying, hey, look, verbal warnings. Don't take reports on on domestic calls unless they're actually domestic violence calls. Before they would have to do it, if it kicked out as a domestic call, they had to do a report for it as if it were a domestic call. And I said, no, I want you guys to go and assess it. If it's not a domestic, don't do a report for it. Just do a CAD entry. So those were a lot of little things that we did and it took a while, but we 
we, so, we slowly but surely showed them through good leadership, through consistent leadership, that we had their back and that we were going to do what was best for them. I like that. Um, it, it, it is the little things for us. And, um, you know, I say us, the, the, the lower totem pole. Um, we, like we, the same thing, No Shave November. We got a feel for the community on us having beards. They loved it. They thought it made us more personable, that, you know, went down the line. And then um, they, they, they were allowed. And I think that just that one move, just that one little move boosted morale quite a bit. Um, one of the things that I think really boosts morale, and you kind of touched on it just talking about the domestic stuff, um, allowing guys to do the job because for a while there we were kind of hamstringed as far as like, we're not getting convictions. We're not, and this is outside of the chief's hands, but they can have those conversations. You get a sheriff that steps in, talks to the DA. Hey, like, what's the deal? This is against the law. Our guys are putting this in for it and you guys aren't fi finishing it. 